In this video, I'll take you through the completed installation of a new charger in my electric Brumby. I've got a N-Power charger. It's controlled by a Thunderstruck Motors charge controller, and that charge controller lets me put in a Type 2 socket. So the charging hardware is underneath the car. N-Power charger there in its aluminium heatsink and fan. In front of it there is the EVCC, the charge controller, in a nice clear box. And I've got a, a blue cover there now to hide all of my wiring there. So everything's hidden away. You could get rocks and splashes of water under here. The charger in particular is reasonably waterproof, which is good. To use the charger is very similar to a conventional electric vehicle. Here's a EVS-E we have here, which is a Hyundai one. It's set to 10 amps at the moment. So all we do is we plug this in. I'll put the camera on a stand. So to charge the car, you plug it in. This plug's connected to an EVS-E, which is plugged into the power point, and the car is turned off at the ignition at the moment. So there were no lights. And then when I plugged in, the connection light came on and then the charging light came on. That's the charge controller saying it's right to charge now and is asking the, the charger to charge. Now the flashing light down the bottom is the charge controller's status light. We've got four modes we can be in. At the moment it's in mode one. Mode one means that we are going to charge to 80% slowly. And so I've got it set up to charge slowly will be at six amps. And then um, charge position two is 80% fast. So I've got a switch in here, I'll show you in a sec. Um, I'll turn it on to mode two. So you get that feedback there that, that's now flashing twice. So that means you're in mode two and mode two is that we are charging to 80%, but we're charging fast. Now, what fast means is as fast as the EVSE is set up to charge. At the moment, this one's set up to 10 amps. So this will be charging at 10 amps. The next selection position is number three, and that is 100% uh, slow. So it's now going to charge up to 100% full uh, at six amps. And number four, flashes four times. So what 100% and 80% means is that's a, a voltage re, uh, setting. And so I've got the charge controller to set up. I've got the charge controller set up to either charge to 170 volts, which is 80%, or I can't remember what the voltage is for the 100%, but a different voltage overall. This is the position of the switch. It's just inside here have it recessed behind here, so I'm hopefully less likely to, to hit it with things that I'm putting in the tray. A uh, little label there at the moment. So switch. Yeah, turn it back to 80% slow. Below the switch is my USB port. So with the USB port, we can connect into the charge controller and change settings and, and um, get get records of, of past charging events. Now on this EVSE here, uh, this is a Hyundai one, but others are similar. We can change it to change it to charge at six amps, eight amps, or ten amps. The charge controller uh, recognizes that and limits the charging current to to that value. It works quite nicely. This is the other charger we have. This one can deliver up to 25 amps, I think it is. The charger I've got has a limit of 15 amps, and so this will draw, the charger will draw 15 amps from this char, from this EVSE here. Another thing with this charge controller is that we can put in an interlock so that when it's plugged in, you can't drive the car. So the way this way I've made this work is turn it to on here. I've got a little pre-charge light there, which disables the, the start contactor. And I've put the, the charge controller in that line as well, 
which means that I can't turn it to the on position and the, sorry, I can't start the vehicle, turn the, the drive contactor on while that's plugged in. So I do that now. Nothing happens. I should see, hear a click when that happens, but it, it won't let me do it. Whereas if I go and unplug it, then we can start the, the car and spin the motor up. This works whether the hmm, this works whether the power is is on on the EVSC or not. So the power was on at that stage. This time I'll I'll turn the power off. And when I plug this in, that should stop up there. There it fell out, so we can't drive now. And I can't re-enable it. Turning the key switch to start does nothing. This USB socket down here lets me plug the computer into the charge controller. Now, why do I want to plug into the charge controller? Normally I won't. Um, I am a bit in this fiddling stage. I'll show you what is available in the in the software. So there are various commands you can do in the EVCC interface here. So you connect through the USB cord and we have all these different commands here listed in the, the, um, the help file here. When you first start it up it has this little header here First one here is show, so we can go show config. Um, like so, shows our configuration. We have all sorts of things set up here. This BMS here is set up so that it works with my particular BMS. The CAN bus is set up so that it works with this particular charger. The out one, two, and three are to do with the, the lights that shine on the on the interface there, so the, the, the red flashing light and, and the green and the orange. The type of charger that's set up, the profiles here, we've got one, two, three, four, each of these are set up a little bit differently. Those are what the, the button does over there. Down here we've got our 20k and 5k, that's to do with the, with the button setup. And then we've got our CAN bus options down here, and so it's set up at the moment for the the J1772, which is my type two socket there. So the, the show configures is very useful. What else do we have? We've got all these different set things here. And so, oh, hang on, the show history, show history gives you a list of the last few charges. And so it tells you how long it took, how much, how many kilowatt hours there were, uh, the maximum and, and minimum of the, you know, just the maximum of the uh, the charging current and, and so on, uh, including the, also the reason why it stopped. And so you can see here for this last one, EVSE disconnect, so I turned it off at the EVSE. Uh, this is how many watt hours, two kilowatt hours or so, got up to 168.3 volts. I haven't found the the watt hours to be particularly useful. It doesn't seem to relate to reality in my particular setup. I'm not sure if that's because of the charger that I've got. The charger may be reporting back a different current than what the EVCC is expecting. Not sure. Anyway, you can get some information from that. All these set commands here are to do with different things like so you can set up what type of BMS you have and what your outputs are and all that kind of stuff so that's really useful when you're first setting it up. You can reset your your history you can you can delete your profile and that sorts of things. Uh, your enable here is to do with your um, 
the way that things are set up again i'm not really sure what each of those are but that's been set up for my type 2 at the moment disable the trace the trace is very useful so we can trace state we can trace charger we can trace can bus can bus is if you're trying to debug your can bus messages when you're first getting your your charger connected or your bms you can have a can bus bms as well the charger messages are a bit nicer to interpret so it'll tell you whether it's charging and what rate it charges and it scrolls back scrolls along in a endless scroll uh, and the state is when you're plugging in and unplugging and so on so we'll look at those in a second the measure you can measure here your loop proximity and p-select the p-select is the the switch one two three four and so you can measure what it's um it, it it does it on resistance and so you can measure what resistance it's measuring and make sure you've got it set up correctly your proximity is to do with the uh the plugging in of the this j1772 plug and your loop is to do with the bms so those are all things to to do while you're setting up so the most interesting things are the traces so let's go through and have a look at that so at the moment we're not doing anything so let's uh what should we trace let's trace the state so we've got the state tracking is tra state tracing is now on and so if i plug in you get the different states coming along there. Now, I don't know what each of these mean. I haven't had any problems. You know, I generally get to know things when, when they don't work. Uh, so, but you can see there that it's now in charge. The new state there is charge. And so we went from drive to warm up to, to wait to charge. And we're now in charge. Now that we're charging, if I turn on the trace charger, You can see what that charger is doing. So it's saying 11 amps. That 11 amps, I'm not sure what that means. It, it doesn't really seem to be what it's drawing from the, uh, the 240 volt AC. It doesn't really seem to be what it's delivering into the DC. So I'm a bit suspicious of exactly what it is, but you can see that it's going up and down and, and, and so on. So that's fine temperature there and your your watt hours how how much you you've delivered so far in this charging session so go trace off so all tracing now off and I put on trace state again and turn it off so I'll turn it off at the EVSE, EVSE, this particular one has a button on the back. That turns it off. It's a nice way of turning it off. And so now we're in charger stop. We're into drive state. Now, if I unplug this, it says disconnected. There is a problem with the EVCC or an annoyance anyway, something that I would have liked it to do that it doesn't do, which is related to my power setup here. Uh, so here we have off-peak and on-peak power. It's cheaper during certain times of the day. There's two different times a day where you have peak and off-peak during the weekdays. On the weekends, it's all off-peak. It's reasonably complicated. And so what I've done is I've set up a, a seven-day timer on the wall back there, and that turns this power point and another power point over there on and off and so this power point is on only during off peak times it's off peak time at the moment so the power is on later on it'll turn itself off and then it'll turn itself back on again when it's off peak time what that means in practice is 
you'll often come home from work and plug in and there'll be no power from the power point. And then, but you plug in and then the power turns on at nine o'clock at night when it's off peak and starts charging the cars. Quite, quite a nice way of doing it. That works perfectly well in our Hyundai Kona with this EV, e, EVSE that I have here, which is a Hyundai EVSE. And it worked perfectly well in our previous car, uh, Mitsubishi Outlander, but it doesn't work with this EVCC. So I can give you an example. If I turn this off, so that's simulating the PowerPoint being off. I'll just turn the car off, which will be its normal state when I do this. So I come home, so the, the, the communications there now just says break because the EVCC has turned off. So here, here we go, I've come home, I've turned the car off and I go to plug it in and there's no power, the EVCC is not lit up at all. And we plug it in. The EVCC lights up, it knows that it's been plugged in, uh, which is a, a feature of it so that it can turn itself on. And then if there was power, it would, it would then start the charger. So you can see here it's gone from the old state was warm up, it's now gone into wait. And then it goes into charge a timeout and it turns itself off. That little light turns off there and it is now inactive. And what happens when the power comes back on is absolutely nothing at all. Which means that I come home and I do this, it doesn't charge during the night. It can only charge if I plug it in when there is power there. Now I've spoken to Thunderstruck, the supplier of the EVCC. Uh, they understand the problem, they understand why I want to do it that way. They came back with a couple of suggestions which haven't worked. Um, I'm still in contact with them. I'm imagining it. we can hopefully do it in software in the EVCC. If we can get an update of that, then hopefully we can make this actually work. Uh, if that happens at some stage, then I'll update the, the link at, at the bottom of this video in, in YouTube so you can see if, if we've had it happen. Otherwise, that, that is a, it's an annoyance, basically. <laughs> I need to come out here and, and turn the, the thing on at, at off-peak time. I can't do it automatically. So I've ended up with a very practical charging solution. I've gained myself a Type 2 socket, which I didn't have before. I can charge up to 15 amps, which I couldn't do before, uh, which means I'll be able to charge off um, public charging stations, the, the AC versions of them anyway. The charge controller's straightforward but very feature rich. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it, and once you get your head around how, to, how it all works, it, it's it's pretty simple to do it all. Uh, and the NPower charge, which is a cheaper version than the Thunderstruck, seems to interface quite well. It's just one that little kneeling thing with the, the charging current, but otherwise it's fine. I don't particularly need that, that function. Interfaces with the BMS, got that working. And so the only problem I really have with this setup at the moment is that it, it won't turn on when I've uh, during the off-peak power. That, that'll be a software thing, you never know. Uh, Thunderstruck might come out with a, a firmware update that will let me be able to, to change that functionality. In the meantime, I've got a, a very practical charging system.